glorious weather and a stellar field for the Amstel Gold Race. 254 kilometres with plenty of climbs, 33 peaks in fact. Lots of pinch points and strategy, equally as important as strength. So who would take it on? Well, a breakaway formed very, very early. Nine riders went up the road and established a gap of around about four minutes. Slowly but surely, it started to disintegrate for them, however. There was too much at stake. And, of course, Matthew van der Poel, starting off as out-and-out favourite, was the man that everyone had an eye on. As a result, the pressure was on, and Alpes and Fenix were required to do an awful lot of work. Slowly but surely, van der Poel started to burn out his teammates. The breakaway itself... Well, it had a number of incarnations, one of which included Van Hoydonk, who got it just a little bit wrong on one of the more focused corners. In its Grenadiers came to the fore, stellar work being done by Ben Turner. In fact, the drive there by four of Ineos Grenadiers was essentially for either Pitcock or Kwiatkowski. Even they could not decide. Van Hoydonk was to be wound in, but the splits had opened up behind. The pressure of Ineos Grenadiers was starting to tell. Van der Poel isolated, his brave lieutenants were behind. Meanwhile, up front was a camera bike. Out of my way, said Ben Turner, we're coming through. Such strength and determination and a proper battle plan as well. Well, exchanging duties were Pidcock and Kwiatkowski at the last. How would it pan out and which one of them would be allowed to take a step forward? That was the question. 33.8 kilometres from home and the climbs just kept raining down like hammer blows upon everybody. Well, nobody wanted the duty, didn't want to lead each other into success. Dice Benut, Askreen, Pidcock, Kwiatkowski, Camp, Toynes. It was a, a quality group that started to fracture. You had to be brave. Hershey was one of those that rolled the dice for UAE Team Emirates, but every single move was marked out by others. Time then to crank it up. Pidcock decided to put on the hurt, allowing this time Kwiatkowski to rest up. Marked out cleverly as he was by Dylan Turns. Well, when it came to the last of the three laps that characterised the race, we crossed the start-finish line and Kwiatkowski went for it. It looked like a, an alarm bell and the man who answered the clarion call, spectacularly so, was AG2R's Benoit Cosnefois. He sped off. Others, well, we wondered whether strategy-wise they were not wanting to lead somebody else to success. Could it be that just the legs weren't there? Well, there were a few incarnations in terms of a chase, but it really led to naught. The gap tenuous, around about 20 seconds, still with a couple of kilometres to go. It was bridgeable, and it was Matthew van der Poel who decided to set off in pursuit. Finally, he just had to take the bit. But frankly, there were others that were marking him out. A tough game to play this, especially when you have the likes of Askreen on your tail. Matthews was also in the frame. Camp from Trek. It was heartbreaking. Well, would it be the same staring into the abyss by two riders up front as we had in Flanders? That day, Van der Poel had been victorious. Well, there were two here, but would they be caught? Thijs Benut of Jumbo Visma decided to set off and try and bridge. But it was all between Kwiatkowski and Benoit Cosnefoy. Cosnefoy opened up with 200 metres to go. Kwiatkowski on his back wheel came up alongside. And at the line, well, the heads up view, surely it had to be Cosnefoy. It looked that way. Nobody was certain it went to a photo. And in fact, once we got the reverse angle, we were asking questions ourselves. Cosnefoy, joyous for AG2 our Citroën. Kwiatkowski, miserable in the arms of his teammates. And then this. Could it be that on the throw, it counted? And when the laser beams did their work, that's precisely what we had. Kwiatkowski had won by the narrowest of margin, turning round the fortunes of Ineos Grenadiers after Pidcock had lost out so closely in the past. Well, he was the first to congratulate Kwiatkowski. Commiserations for Benoit Cosnefoy, who, to be honest, took the bad news very well indeed. Kwiatkowski by the narrowest of margins ahead of Cosnefoy. Thijs Benut rounding out the top three. Van der Poel, Camp, Askreen, Matthews. A stellar group of athletes that came to the fore at the very last. Racing at its best, the Amstel, well, it goes down nicely every time.
Super work. Three great chosens and a wonderful winner. The Absol Gold, it never disappoints.